I wouldn't say it's a Pleasure. quite uh, confidence inspiring yet, but the conditions are definitely emerging for a more constructive outlook for uh, the Chinese property sector, for the economy as a whole, and for implications for for risk assets. Uh, as you you know, it's really a necessary condition. The the Politburo statement that uh, they acknowledge the slowdown. It, in addition to acknowledging the property sector's linkage to uh, the economic slowdown, they responded clearly with policy, including the reserve requirement cut, uh, the relending rate. Um, and so now I think a lot of the focus in markets is going to be on the Central Economic Work Conference over the, the next few days and whether we're going to see additional concrete steps uh, to stabilize uh, both the property sector and the economy as a whole. Uh, you know, what's really the, the, the pledge alone is insufficient. What, what really matters in the next couple of uh, months or, or, or quarters is going to be whether there, there's two conditions that are really necessary for this uh, constructive outlook to build. One is a, a stabilization in property sales. You can't have property sales continuing to be declined by 20, 30 percent. That's going to add to financial pressure on developers. And it's difficult to offset that with policy because property sales are just so large as a proportion of the overall economy, 15.7 trillion yuan over the last 12 months. That's about 2.4, 2.5 trillion dollars. Um, you know, you can't really offset a, a decline in that very easily. And the second is credit growth. Um, you need to see credit growth stabilize. If you're controlling credit to the property sector and to local governments, you need to find credit through the private sector and uh, credit. And that means lower interest rates. So we're really watching for transmission of lower interest rates through the LPR rate uh, coming up on the 20th and for continued moves to try to reduce banks funding costs and reduce borrowing uh, costs to the real economy. How critical is uh, common prosperity here? Logan, and does it essentially mean that the property developers are going to be mandated by the state or enlisted effectively to do national service and build out more affordable housing? I think it's important, but it doesn't necessarily mean exactly that sort of those sorts of mandates, um, you know, in terms of the uh, state-owned developers being tasked to take up uh, these sorts of uh, these sorts of obligations. I think a lot of that pressure will come on local governments. Uh, the big problem is that there's not enough funding right now um, to really specify exactly how you're going to ensure that the pre-sold houses are actually ha actually completed. So we'll be really watching for that financial support. As I mentioned, sort of, it's insufficient. What common prosperity, I mean, common prosperity is not really policy, so to speak. It's kind of a higher level object, set of objectives. And many different policies can fall within that uh, purview. So, uh, and so, you know, I think it will, you know, guide things at a, you know, at a high level, but it doesn't necessarily translate into specific outcomes for those property developers at, at lower levels. The state, there, there aren't that many shock absorbers here unless you get property sales and credit stronger. Because state-owned developers just aren't large enough as a proportion of, um, right. you know, of, of the sector. 